Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to Japan Math Olympiad 2025 problem 4. At first, let's take a look at a problem statement. We are asked to find all integer coefficient polynomials f of x equal to the sum from i equals 0 to m a i x to the power of i, where we want that a m is not equal to 0, such that at first f of n is greater than 0, and f of n divides n to the power of f of n minus 1, for all n greater than or equal to 2. First of all, let's take a look at the right-hand side of our divisibility condition. We see that the right-hand side here is co-prime to n. This directly implies that also the left-hand side must be co-prime to n, and so we can conclude that the GCD of n and f of n is equal to 1 for all n greater than or equal to 2. On the other hand, we know that the residue class of f of n modulo n is just equal to our constant term in the polynomial. So this left-hand side here can be written as the greatest common divisor of n and a0. Since this holds for all n greater than or equal to 2, we can conclude that a0 is equal to minus 1 or 1. Whenever we have a problem with a divisibility condition, it can be a good idea to consider a prime divisor p dividing our left-hand side, because most of the time it's easier to work with divisibility conditions when we use prime numbers. Therefore, let's take p dividing f of n. Here I want to recall that f is a polynomial, and therefore the residue class of f of n modulo p only depends on the residue class of n modulo p. And hence, we can directly conclude that p also divides f of n plus k times p for every integer k. Now we want to apply our divisibility condition for n plus k times p instead of n. And for this, let's say that k is greater than 0 because we have the condition that n must be greater than or equal to 2. And then this implies that p is also a divisor of n plus k times p to the power of f of n plus k times p minus 1. This immediately implies that p also divides n to the power of f of n plus kp minus 1. We would like to get a nice exponent here to control the right hand side. And here the mass in the theorem comes in handy because it tells us that n to the power of p minus 1 is just congruent to 1 modulo p. And therefore it could be cool if we choose k in such a way that n plus k times p is divisible by p minus 1. This is because then f of n plus kp is just congruent to a0 modulo p minus 1, and therefore this right-hand side here is just congruent to n to the power of a0 minus 1 modulo p. So let's write this argument down and see what we get. We can take k congruent to minus n modulo p minus 1, to get that p minus 1 divides n plus kp. And now, as I said before, this directly implies that f of n plus kp is congruent to a0 modulo p minus 1. And hence, we can conclude by Fermat's little theorem that p divides n to the power of a0 minus 1. Here we can use our observation from the beginning that a0 is either minus 1 or 1. And in both cases, this implies that n is congruent to 1 modulo p. In conclusion, we figured out that if p divides f of n, then it also divides n minus 1. And now we are in a position that we can choose n in such a way that this gives us a really strong statement. The best way to do this is to take n equal to q plus 1 for some prime number q. We immediately get that q is the only possible prime dividing f of n. And therefore, we can directly conclude that f of n is equal to q to the power, let's say, of rq. And here, rq is some non-negative integer. At this point, we can again use the fact that f of x is a polynomial. And here, 
first of all, I want to note that am must be indeed greater than zero because we have the condition that f of n is greater than zero for all n greater than or equal to two. As an immediate consequence, we get that f grows faster than x minus one to the power of m minus one, but slower than x minus one to the power of m plus one. And therefore, we can conclude that if this prime number q is chosen large enough, then we must have that rq is equal to m. So let's write this down. In conclusion, we see that the polynomial f of x minus x minus 1 to the power of m has all prime numbers q large enough as roots. And therefore, this polynomial must be the zero polynomial. So this is equal to zero for all x. So we must have that f of x is equal to x minus 1 to the power of m. And let's now erase the blackboard and check if these solutions are possible. We want to check our two conditions on f. And first of all, it's clear that f of n is greater than 0 for all n greater than or equal to 2. So this condition is clear. For the second one, we want to check that f of n, which is n minus 1 to the power of m, divides n to the power of n minus 1 to the power of m minus 1. To check if this is true, we want to take a prime number p dividing the left hand side and want to take a look on how many times p divides both of the sides. For evaluating the number of times p divides the right hand side, we can use the LTE lemma since this condition here implies that p also divides n minus 1. And to do this, we have to do a case distinction, namely if p is equal to 2 or not. At first, let's start with the case that p is not equal to 2. Here we get nu p of n to the power of n minus 1 to the power of m minus 1 is equal to nu p of n minus 1 plus nu p of the exponent, so nu p of n minus 1 to the power of m minus 1. Since p divides n minus 1, we know that this first sum here is at least 1, and therefore this is greater than or equal to nu p of n minus 1 to the power of m, and hence p divides the right hand side at least as many times as the left one. For the case that p is equal to 2, I want to note that our exponent n minus 1 to the power of m is even. And therefore, the LTE lemma tells us that nu p of n to the power of n minus 1 to the power of m minus 1 is just equal to nu p of n minus 1 plus nu p of n plus 1 plus nu p of the exponent, so n minus 1 to the power of m, and then minus 1. This is again greater than or equal to nu p of n minus 1 to the power of m, and therefore this case is also good. In conclusion, all the functions f of x equal to x minus 1 to the power of m satisfy the given condition, and therefore we are done.